thank you. Yeah, um, so basically, I did end up stepping in at the last minute. Um, what happened is, so just to introduce myself, I am Robert Fay. I've worked with the platform for about six years now. Uh, most recently, I had a consultancy called Mavens. You mentioned Mavens Mate. Um, anyone use Mavens Mate or know, know it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and one of my colleagues, I've actually just left Mavens, but one of my colleagues there, Brian, was going to be presenting this session originally. Uh, he's presented it before at uh, London Squatting Dreamforce. And basically, he figured out right at the last minute that uh, having a baby and another one on the way, and also some work commitments, maybe sneaking off to go surfing wasn't you know, the best thing to be doing this weekend. So, um, so, yeah, so he called me up and he said, Oh, yeah, Rob, do you fancy going surfing next weekend? I said, Of course I do. And by the way, do you, do you want to present my session? So, so here I am. Um, so, Platform events. Platform events I'm really happy to be talking about, even at the last minute, because I think it's something that's slipped under the radar for a lot of people. I think a lot of people have sort of seen it on maybe uh, page 300 of the release notes and thought, oh, that's interesting, that sounds all right. But not really given the thought into, hey, you know, what's this? Uh, you know, what does this mean for us? What can I do about it? Can I use these? And I think that that is particularly for uh, people who aren't architects, maybe people who are you know, admins or working declaratively, uh, they've not really given it a, uh, they've not really given it the, the sort of the, the look into it and uh, they've given it the time to understand it. Um, so what I'm trying, to, what I want to do with this session is help you understand what problem uh, platform events, platform events can help you solve, and then give you the resources to go into the sort of technical detail if you want to. So. Hotel reservation. So if we imagine that we're at this hotel, we're on the front desk, and we are you know, not using an IT system at all. Uh, there's someone manually picking up the phone and saying, okay, this is your, res you know, you're, you're there on the phone taking reservations and writing them in a book. And they want to go digital, so we set them up a super, super simple uh, reservation system where they're literally just entering this uh, into a computer <coughs> instead of into a book. And uh, does anyone's org look like production org look this simple? <laughs> no. um, and I think the reason why it doesn't is because I think Paul touched on this earlier on that actually uh, one of the best things about Salesforce is that it's so easy to change, to adapt, and to innovate the, the platform that you actually end up, you start off maybe simple like this, but then after a, a couple of years, you end up with all these different things going on. So. You might have, you might say, your the sort of business coming to you, uh, maybe your product owner, and saying, "Hey, uh, we want to be able to take bookings through a, a booking aggregator like Booking.com. We want to be able to integrate with that with a hotel website. Perhaps we want to um, then once we've made a, a reservation and confirmed it, we want to be able to process pay payments, um, offer reward points so that people keep coming back to us." And even do things with IoT, like uh, say setting the uh, TV channel to, to the, the person's favorite channel, or setting the lighting the way that they like it, um, all these cool things like that. And the brilliant thing is that Salesforce lets us do all of these things. The challenging thing is that when you end up with all of these different point-to-point, -point, yeah, all of these different point-to-point -point integrations, uh, although it looks nice when you know, architects are sort of making diagrams like this. Behind the scenes, it can end up being really, really messy. So you end up not with a very simple uh, reservation system anymore, but actually a reservation system that is calling out to all of these different things. It's calling out to all of these different systems. And it has to know and it has to understand what's going on in all of these different systems to, to be able to call them, to interrupt, interrupt with them. So it's, uh, it just gets really complicated. If you're the person, if you're a, an admin or a developer who's trying to maintain the system, uh, manage it and keep it keep going forwards, uh, it just gets really complicated because you then end up, end up with sort of processes, if you're doing it declaratively, that have loads and loads of different conditions and loads of different things going on. If you're doing things with Apex, it's a bit hard to see here, but basically instead of just saying having a method where you're uh, saving a reservation, and that's that, which is what you would expect from a reservation management system. It's actually coming to call out to all of these different systems that might be within 
uh, might be hosted on the platform, it might be off platform, and uh, you might even try if you try to be a bit smarter about it and say, okay, I'm going to listen out for uh, a, a record being inserted, a reservation record being inserted, and then I'm going to do something off the back of that, run APEX code off the back of that. How will we do that? With a trigger, yeah. No, that guy? Yeah, he's um, but you end up with the same problem just in reverse because you end up with uh, the system, say for example, it's the payment system listening out for a record being inserted. The payment system now needs to understand how the uh, reservation management system works. So again, we call that this um, tight coupling, where basically we're not we don't have clean separation between different components and different systems, and we have to understand everything. So that's really, you know, we end up with three different areas of problems. We end up with technical problems where we can no longer develop and deploy these different systems and components uh, independently. That then can lead into problems with people. So if you're, again, that developer or that admin who is having to work on this platform, but you know, you, whenever you try to go near it, it's actually a sort of spaghetti of code, a spaghetti of different things and different systems that you don't really understand, you're not comfortable with. Has anyone ever been in a situation where there's sort of a system that's so complicated that it becomes a black box, you don't even want to touch it? <coughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. And so, so we then end up, when the business comes to us and says, hey, you know, we know that we can do all this really interesting stuff with Salesforce, we want to add in a new integration, we want to add this new feature, we then, what do we do? Because we're a little bit um, afraid of messing with the system, we double or triple or however much our, our estimates, we say it's gonna be, instead of a few days, it'll be weeks or even months. And so, you then end up with Salesforce, instead of being that really nice innovative platform, it's an, it becomes that legacy system that actually everyone hates working with because everything is slow um, and it holds up at an organization level, it stops you delivering uh, to your customers, it stops you innovating. So what can we do about it? How can we uh, address this problem with platform events? So if we imagine again that we're on the front desk and we don't have any IT system implemented, we just have people around us where we're uh, with a person taking the reservations and then as an analogy to this situation, we're having to say to <coughs> Say to the people around us, say to the payments person, okay, I've just had a reservation, you now need to take the payment of this amount of money. It needs to be paid by this time. It needs to uh, be sent. You need to send an email to this person confirming the, the payment has been sent. And then you also have a rewards person. You have to say, okay, now you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. Again, you're not doing your job. Uh, you're not doing just your job. You're having to know what's going on with everyone else. It doesn't scale and uh, it just gets very, very complicated. It's too much of a job for one person to do instead of true uh, reservation management. So what we would want to do is just be able to say, okay, we've just had a reservation. We've just had a reservation come in and then have everyone else listening out to that just do their jobs. Yeah. So we're not having to micromanage all these different people. And that's exactly what platform events let you do. This is like, this is the worst it gets in terms of architecture stuff. So. Just very briefly, basically platform events like you publish events, basically notify the entire platform, the entire system, and also other systems that might be off the platform, and say, hey, something has just happened, an event has happened. Um, that then goes into something called an event bus. Don't worry about it, you can read about it online if you're interested. Um, but then the interesting part is that then subscribers, so different systems, different components, different codes, can then listen in, listen out for your events, and can, they can then take actions off the back of that. But because you have that event bus um, between the two, the publisher doesn't need to know about the subscriber. And that's really powerful because you can then add in different systems that are listening out for these events, and uh, you're not having to update the publisher, you're not having to update the system that is sending out these messages, these notifications. So, just to see how this looks in practice, we can define an event, and they look a lot like uh, a custom object, and that's intentional. It's a really smart thing that Salesforce have done because it means that it's very easy to uh, 
to pick up. You're not having to learn a new technology from scratch. Uh, it's stuff that we're all familiar with, so we can see that it has uh, custom fields. Now, I should say there are limitations in terms of you can't have, for example, relationships, you can't have formula fields. Um, at the moment, maybe in the future it will be possible, but uh, you can see in terms of what it is, it's not something that's mysterious, it's not something that's difficult to use. You, it's, you set them up in the same way that you would a custom object. And I think something that's, something that's important to point out is that this lets you then, uh, as an admin, you can then define what is happening declaratively. You're not having to, it's not like uh, the way that we do integrations usually where we're having to say, okay, in code, we're writing, this is what we're expecting to receive from another system. It's Instead, it's just saying, okay, we can go in and, and anyone can see these are the fields, these are the pieces of information that we're expecting from this other system or this other area of, of the platform. Then it comes to publishing. Um, publishing, again, is super, super easy because uh, you can see in Apex, we just have this line here. So again, creating the event itself is very similar to just creating uh, S object, very, very sim uh, similar. And then it's just, you, you run this, you call this method, which just says event bus publish, And then you give the name <coughs> of the uh, event that you're publishing. But what's smart is that you can do this declaratively with Process Builder. Yeah. So you can listen out, you could listen out, for example, and say, okay, when a uh, reservation record is inserted, I'm going to fire an event and say, okay, this has been inserted. Uh, we're gonna have this number of guests. This is the name of the guest, um, or the person booking, check-in date, check-out date. So again, it's, you can manage everything declaratively. You can also interact with it by, by the API. And again, it's simple because it's just like uh, inserting a record. You're not having to do anything uh, new. You're not having to learn a new API. Same with uh, subscribing. So subscribing, you can see, basically, in Apex, we're using technologies we know again. So it's a trigger on the custom event object. So nothing that we don't, haven't done before with Apex triggers. And we can also run them uh, in a process builder. We can listen out and we can say, okay, when my other process has fired this event, then I can listen out for that and I can run certain logic off the back of that. And again, you might think, okay, why don't I just have one process that says when someone inserts a reservation record, do these three or four things. Well, if you were to do that and then you needed to add in a fifth thing, you might have to rewrite that entire process. <coughs> And again, it doesn't scale. If you then, if you get to the scale, if you think of Facebook, for example, where you have uh, all the different connected apps and hundreds of different uh, integrations, then you could not have this sort of approach where you're adding in you know, hundreds of different call-outs to, uh, to different systems. And again, you can subscribe by the API. So you can do this. Uh, there's a Java library to, to do this, or you can also, uh, Use uh, the Comet D library, so you can actually receive these live in your uh, in your application off the, off the platform. So how does this look now? So after we've implemented this, you can see whereas before we were going straight from the hotel reservation system to Booking.com to the hotel website to the phone, instead of having to do that, we're now just listening out for a reservation request event, for example. So. And then the same going the other way, we're just creating, we're firing, publishing a reservation creation event. So this now means that our hotel reservations system or part of the platform is now super, super simple. All it's doing is listening for one event and then it's just publishing one event. It doesn't get any simpler than that. So now if you imagine that the business comes to us and say, hey, we want to integrate not just with booking.com, but also with Expedia or Travago, you're not having to then, you know, update a trigger to listen uh, on the hotel reservations end and, and listen out for uh, a, a new uh, system coming in, or you're not having to 
Um, you're not having to update a point-to-point -point integration straight from here. All you have to do is say, okay, we'll write a tiny little bit of code to make it fire the request event, and then we don't have to do anything in the hotel reservations system. We don't do anything there. Then, likewise, when we, if we were to say, okay, we don't want, we don't just want to, or say we wanted to add in a set, another system here, or we wanted to uh, change the package that we're using for reward points, or um, the, you know, rewrite, add in a new process, for example. We're not having to update the hotel reservation system. We're just saying, you know what, just, we've, we've already got a, a predefined event here. All we have to do is uh, add in, take whatever we're adding in and just make it listen out for, um, for this event that's declarative, that is really easy to understand and is meaningful. So super, super easy. And I think that the point about it being meaningful is really important because with platform events, you're going from code or like, like we just saw in the developer console where it's a workflow being run or a piece of code being run. Trying to look through that and trying to understand that, make sense of it, is very, very difficult. If you're doing this and you're firing events, that becomes meaningful to anyone. That becomes meaningful to an admin, it becomes meaningful to your stakeholders because they can look at that an, an object page and they can see, yeah, it makes sense that we have a number of guests. It makes sense that we have uh, someone's name, their check-in date, check-out date. And where I think this gets really exciting in the future is when you start combining it with uh, things like Einstein, when we start looking at this with AI, because as we heard earlier on, really the challenge with AI is having meaningful data in the first place. And what you're doing by using these events, these platform event events, is that you are creating meaningful events. You're saying this is what's happening. When this, when this piece of code is running or when this integration happens, this is, you know, this is someone reserved. It's not just someone is running a method or someone is running a flow or a process builder. It's someone has made a reservation and that's meaningful. And then we can start hooking that into uh, Einstein in the future and say actually, okay, for example, we can listen out for when someone is adding a, an item to their basket on, on Amazon.com, for example. And then, then we can see, okay, they've then taken it out of their basket and we can start to look at it. Why has that happened? You know, we can understand what, what has happened, what else, what other events are going on. And because it's not just code that's being run, it actually is, is a meaningful event and we can look back at it and we can replay those events and think, okay, now I actually understand. I'm not just running analytics on my system, uh, my sort of static records as, as you would do now. You can actually look at it dynamically and think, hey, what's, what's actually going on in terms of how are people using my system? And that can be super, super powerful. That's why you know, the giants of Facebook, um, LinkedIn, and these kind of guys, they know how people use their platforms, and we, don't, we often don't with, with Salesforce, um, but these platform events could be a step towards doing that in the future by understanding what events are going on, how are people using the, uh, the system. And so, very quickly, what, what impact does it have? How has this benefited us? So, we now think, technically, that system, that uh, reservation management system is now very, very simple. It's easy to understand. It's easy because we're not having to think, okay, it's calling out to this system and doing this, doing this, doing this. All it's doing is taking a reservation. It becomes very, very easy to understand. It becomes easy to maintain and manage. And that means that for our people, again, developers, the admins, the people who are working with it can, uh, you know, they're happy to be working on it because they can get it in their head. They're not having to understand an entire system and have that in their minds when they're working on it. So that means that then when our stakeholders come to us and say, okay, we want to integrate with another system, we would just say, okay, yeah, we can do that very easily because we've got an event <coughs> that is already being fired, that's already meaningful. Uh, and all we need to do is just write a little bit of code or use Process Builder to listen out for this event. And then that can, uh, you know, we can facilitate the, the integration that way. Super, super easy and very, very scalable. And then ultimately, as an, as an organization, again, it's giving us what we want from the Salesforce platform, which is being able to innovate, being able to deliver very, very quickly, and being able to grow ultimately to uh, potentially integrating with hundreds of systems if we needed to in the future, and it being manageable, not being not ending up in the sort of spaghetti that we had earlier on.
So just to summarize really quickly, they are really, really good. They have so much potential. I think they are ready for you to use, and I think I should have emphasized you because it's not just architects, it's not just TAs and SAs, it's admins, it's developers. Everyone should be getting to know these because I think these are going to be, this is going to be massive on the platform in the next few years when people are really getting their head around this uh, about how they work. Um, I think a lot of it is a, a mind shift, and it's different to a paradigm of, uh, of how we operate and how we, you know, different components and systems interact with each other. But uh, once we get our head around this, this is how LinkedIn, as I say, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of these big systems, they all use event-driven architectures. And Salesforce has given us a way to use that same approach uh, on the platform free and very, very easily. Uh, so I, I just think it's, it's going to be huge. And if you can understand it now, you'll be one of the first people. And the way to do it is if you just Google uh, trail hide event, uh, sorry, platform events basics. Uh, it's fantastic. It's very, it just takes you through some of the detail I haven't sort of dived into in this talk. It gives you examples of how to integrate declaratively, how to integrate with code, um, how to use publish and, and listen out for these events. And uh, hopefully once you're comfortable, you'll start seeing examples of how you can use them in your own system. I think, okay, maybe next time we're going to, we need to do an integration, or maybe next time we want to have an event uh, that someone is doing trigger something else happening. Maybe we can use a platform event and make it super scalable and super flexible. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, in terms of governance, is there anything specific around platform events that's different? Uh, yeah, yeah, so um, I think the limit is 100,000 platform events being fired per hour. So you can see that's a lot, you know, it's millions per day. Um, but actually, so uh, Kafka, which, which is what Platform Events is based on, that can scale, and it also, sorry, I should say that they're stored at the moment for, for 24 hours. But if you look at uh, uh, Kafka, which is what it's based on, that was designed to be super, super scalable, can scale up to 50 terabytes, or something ridiculous. And I think in the future, when this becomes more widely adopted, uh, that could become really powerful because then again, you're not, you can be tracking everything that's going on and you could look back and again, that's where, you know, we need a big data set for things like AI and uh, machine learning to be really powerful. That's when you can start looking at thousands or millions or even billions of events and start really being able to uh, understand how the system is being used dynamically. So especially for IoT, mm. if you want to buy add-in hats or I don't even pay extra for it, but if you want to add on additional platform events for hour, you can do that. Thank you. So talk to your accounting guy. And they're going to be relaxing that more and more. Forward-looking statement. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it being for more stuff coming. And it's, it's, a, this, it's an area of this platform that is super, you know, it's an exciting part of the problem thing, isn't it? Um, do you have a question? Yeah, so apart from, uh, you mentioned that it, this, in, incorporating this architecture involves kind of a philosophical shift in the way you think about design patterns from uh, trigger based to publish subscribe kind of model. Uh, apart from that, other, is that, is the main problem that this solves compared to just a standard like S object insert with triggers, the fact that it has a different kind of set of rate limits and it scales more quickly than standard like email transactions on S objects? Or? Uh, I think that's that's part of it is that it's massively scalable. Okay. Um, but also a lot of the time, again, if you're so if you come back to to using triggers, you have to understand. You have to be uh, you have to be listening out to this the component that is uh, firing that trigger or inserting that record. Okay. And you have to understand what state that record is going to be in, and you have to interpret that. You Sorry, what I mean, so for I mean, you we talked about there being an, an event type of S object, right? Like a custom object that you would insert and then have a trigger based on that. Is there a difference between using a, an event S object and using like a platform event to to handle that? So I, I, there are, yeah, there are quite a lot of sort of te technical differences. Okay. Um, I think one is, for example, that they cannot be 
uh, updated. This is literally just November as it occurs. It's not something that's musical, it's not something that's going to be, it's not a, re it's not a record, it's not something right. that is, uh, yeah, sorry, I should have uh, clarified that. So this is just something that, and it also means that you, because you then have a log essentially of all of these events being fired, whereas a record, once you insert it, once you um, <coughs> update it, you, you don't then have that history of all of the different changes that have happened, the different things that have come before. So they're fundamentally two different, you know, they have two different purposes. Um, but yeah, I think that's an important point. And that, that's something that the, the, the trailer heads uh, helps, I think, explain to better. It goes into the detail of, look, this is, uh, these are the, the technical differences between the two. But fundamentally, it's, they, they're used differently, they have different purposes. Okay, thank you. Good. Good? Time for lunch? Okay, yes. Great. There we go.